Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's the last day of the year, folks. It's Friday, December 31st, 2021. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the fight I like on the pay-per-view show that's going to happen tomorrow is the rematch of Johnny Rice against Michael Coffey. Right? That is a special fight. The first fight was viewed as an upset. Michael Coffey was unbeaten. Johnny Rice was viewed as a journeyman. Johnny Rice had had some close calls where he almost beat some people you know, but he ultimately fell apart. But my point to you is what we viewed as an upset in that first fight, right? Johnny Rice pulled the upset. Everyone was shocked. Coffee was supposed to be one of these guys with power, boxing technician, could handle things in the pocket. What we thought was, in my opinion, uh, an upset is actually a structural problem that Michael Coffey might not be able to solve. Johnny Rice has a clear advantage when it comes to what I call ring coverage. Right? Let's remember, boxing is like rock, paper, scissors. In the abstract, you could look like you have more skills. But if you have a weakness that happens to be an opponent's strength, that opponent might be able to beat you. Right? Well, let me tell you, Michael Coffey is too much in his construct. He can't reach across the ring and hit you. In other words, he's the basketball player who doesn't have the three-point shot. He can't hit from distance. Now, Johnny Rice, in addition to having the much better legs, the much better mobility, the much better timing. Johnny Rice has something unique. It is a hair trigger. Straight right hand. I'm not kidding. Right? This is that rare hair trigger straight right hand that he can hit you with from distance. So this is the perfect opponent for Johnny Rice because as Johnny Rice moves around the ring Michael Coffey has to try to come find him because Coffey can't hit from three he can only hit from two figuratively speaking so he is following a mobile Johnny Rice around and Rice can pivot right he has the suddenness that augments that hair trigger straight right hand. Rice can pivot and throw that punch from distance. Rice, because he was such a big underdog the first time around, here, the second time around, right, to paraphrase Shalimar for those from back in the day, the second time around, incredibly, you're still getting value on Johnny Rice. On everygame.eu. Again, that's everygame.eu. And I'm not recommending any site here. I'm just giving you a site where you can see the odds. You can get Johnny Rice for a minus 132. Just a smidge above even money. And this is a guy who already won the first fight. Right? Let me also throw out something else. You know, these fighters don't know the holes in their game. Especially not unbeaten fighters. The people around them are terrified of losing the gig they have. Right? They see a guy with talent and they're thinking, wow, you know, if this guy ever breaks through, if this guy ever gets a shot at a title, we're going to make a lot of money. Right? So I get the feeling in many boxing circles right the trainers the people around the guy either they might not realize that the guy they think is Adonis has holes in his game or 
They sense that the guy can improve in some areas, but they're afraid to tell him. I'm surprised the first fight got made. I don't know what Michael Coffey's people were doing. Because it's clear to me that he doesn't have the rhythm or movement or ring coverage of Johnny Rice. And I don't care if Johnny Rice is a journeyman. Once you take a look at that straight right hand that he has, right, and it's here trigger, right, that straight right hand that he has, and once you realize that Coffee is a guy who is local, again, he's not a three-point shooter, he's a two-point shooter. He needs to be closer to you, to hit you. Then you realize that Coffee's at risk. I don't care what the record are, uh, is, right? Let's remember, boxing's not standardized. This isn't a typical sports league. The fighters are fighting different levels of competition. I would argue that Johnny Rice has fought the higher level of competition, whether he won the fights or not. I would argue that the best punch in this fight is Johnny Rice's straight right hand. That's the best punch. And I would argue there is nothing Coffee can do to match Johnny Rice's movement. I mean, folks, the pattern of the fight, I'm convinced, is going to be Coffee trying to catch up with Johnny Rice, who's backing up. If you bum rush Johnny Rice, Johnny Rice has great feet, so he can just set his feet, time it, and hit you with that straight right hand. I like the winner of the first fight here, Johnny Rice. He's going off at a minus 132 over Michael Coffey. That's the fight I like on the ticket, right? I believe the Luis Ortiz-Charles Martin fight um, is troublesome simply because of Luis Ortiz's age, right? I do feel that Luis Ortiz, who's only lost to one man, Deontay Wilder. And quite frankly, I thought he was off to a fast start in both fights. The judges didn't for the first fight. I don't know how you could look at the first four rounds and not feel that Luis Ortiz was off to a fast start. I do feel Luis Ortiz is more skilled than Charles Martin. But Charles Martin has a punch. Charles Martin is several years younger. Ortiz now is something like 42 years old. Right? Even though heavyweights age more slowly, Let's remember that Charles Martin at one point did win a heavyweight title and is seven years or so younger than Luis Ortiz. So I don't like the line on that fight, right? Because Ortiz is favored, but you have to pay dearly for it. According to everygame.eu, and no, I'm not paid by any of the sites I've mentioned here online. I know I've mentioned a few. Uh, just understand that a minus 385 just doesn't leave you enough margin for risk. Right? So I'm staying away from the Luis Ortiz Charles Martin fight, even though it's a very important fight for boxing. Right? Understand, we've just seen what a Southpaw can do against Anthony Joshua. Right? One of the heavyweight champs right now, Usyk, is a Southpaw. That opens the door to a whole new set of opponents. I'm assuming, and it's a big assumption, but I'm assuming Usyk beats Anthony Joshua in the rematch. Now there's an open question on what happens for the Tyson Fury-Usyk fight. I'm leaning toward Tyson Fury because Fury is, in my opinion, a historical heavyweight. He knows how to fight small. Look at him against Derek Chisora. Look at him against Otto Wallet. Look at him after he gets his bell rung by Steve Cunningham and gets off the canvas. Right? I believe that Fury is big enough and aggressive enough and has the legs to smother Alexander Usyk. But the weakness Tyson Fury has apart from being unable for some reason to avoid Deontay Wilder's straight right hand, the weakness he has 
is that he has a problem with small mobile opponents. Right? The smaller version of Johnny Rice. If Usyk beats Tyson Fury, my point to you is a slick southpaw like a Luis Ortiz could be the kind of guy who could give Usyk a lot of problems. Let's remember Usyk himself is in his 30s. Right? Let me also say too that if other fighters are concerned about the fact that Usyk is a southpaw that I could see other fighters who are waiting for their shot at the heavyweight title, right? Let's face it, the heavyweight title for many is off limits because we've had these rematches, right? Two rematches for Tyson Fury against Wilder, right? We're get, about to get the rematch for Joshua against Usyk. So you have a lot of fighters out there, right? Dylan White, who I understand is headed for a purse bid against Tyson Fury. Right, I think Fury beats White, even though be careful there, because those guys have sparred together in the past. Right, there's not going to be the same learning curve when the guys already know each other. Right, but you're going to have a lot of guys waiting for a shot. Ergovic, who I feel is a black swan at heavyweight. Right, Michael Hunter. Some of these guys are going to say, you know what, I want to fight Usyk. I'm in line. Right? There might be some sanctioning body ratings and the person says, hey, if I win my next fight, I'll be a mandatory or whatever. They might want to fight the winner of this fight. Because they'll say, hey, I want to fight a slick southpaw. Right? Charles Martin is a southpaw. Luis Ortiz is a slick southpaw. So, the winner of this fight is going to get opportunities, folks. Right? It's going to be interesting how this unfolds. Also, a guy like Usyk, once he got over on Joshua's left side, that fight was pretty much over. Right, Because Joshua had a problem with the fact that Usyk was slick, a mover, southpaw. Right? Uh, if Usyk fights Luis Ortiz, who knows angles... Right? Ortiz, who won every round on my scorecard of the Wilder rematch, except for, of course, the round where he gets knocked out. Right, If Ortiz, who must be kicking himself for that mistake, that last round, if Ortiz plays his cards right and knows how to rest and pace himself, if he beats Charles Martin, He's going to be a tough out. He's going to be undervalued. He's going to be underrated. He's going to be a tough out for some of the bigger names in the division right now. Anyway, that's how I see it. I like uh, Johnny Rice at the minus 132 over Michael Coffey. The reason I'm mentioning everygame.eu is because I looked elsewhere and I did see Johnny Rice as high as a minus 170. In my opinion, Johnny Rice below a minus 200 is a deal. Right? I especially like, as you could imagine, the minus 132. I think Coffee is one of these guys who is alpha in his social circle. And I believe that social circle did not realize that the guy couldn't move like Johnny Rice could move, right? Rice's legs allow him to create space and to throw that hair trigger right hand. Because it's hair trigger, Coffee can come in prepared to block it, right? But it's too fast, it's too sudden. Eventually, in my opinion, it's going to land. Also, boxing is an expectation game. I believe it's harder because of the expectations for a big underdog to beat a favorite the first time around. Right? We're going to see this fight differently. And judges who were surprised by Johnny Rice's movement, 
are now going to notice it because rice is the favorite. I like rice over coffee. Understand it's a dangerous bet because, of course, it's going off at below minus 200 odds. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.